What's going on everybody? Today's topic is how to install Zadix 4.2 on the top of CentOS 7. As additional thing I will use MariaDB database server as a as a backend database for the Zabbix. Uh, let's start. At first, uh, Zabbix.com download page. Here are some options what we can do, which uh, distribution we would like to pick and I will select a 4.2 version and CentOS 7 here and the MySQL version, which shows uh, some instructions how to prepare your system but before that i will prepare the database server uh, which is available on the download downloads mariadb.org uh, we'll include that in the video description okay let's try to to do to execute the instruction uh, on the left side i got very fresh centos 7 system without any utilities it's a very base core version which can be observed right here for example 7.6 and let's try to set up this mariadb uh, what to do let's try to navigate as a instruction states to this uh, directory and create a new file at first i need to install vim i guess wim and then next one uh, create a new file like this that's it let's create a new file with the name mariadb.repo and inside this file let's include this uh, information okay and write and quit that's okay uh, mariadb repository is okay i will in the same time i will set up uh, the actual zabbix repository with uh, by initiating the following command and now it's there and the next thing uh, maybe let's try to refresh all the cache for all all the repos at first you clean all like this move to the home directory maybe and you make cache fast to make sure all the repos are installed right now and i can see now i got six of the repos MariaDB, one of them, Zabbix repo, and uh, additional repo uh, with uh, some separate packages, uh, which is required in order for the product to function properly. Uh, okay, let's uh, prepare the MariaDB server. Okay, the database server is installed. Uh, what's next? Let's start the database server start mariadb it started let's try to sign in yes uh, without any password we are entering the root mode i will leave it that way to speed up the lab um, so database server is now installed and now we can really follow these instructions because a big uh, repository is also installed let's uh, use the next command to to prepare the Zabbix server and uh, this is the key when you change the the component at the for example the, uh, the last step when you pick a database postgresql it will change this uh, command and you will uh, see that there is PostgreSQL in the command name and PostgreSQL as a backend for the main server which are collecting everything and generating events uh, this guy is for the front end which uh, uh, have a Postgres connector which, which, which knows how to communicate with the 
PostgreSQL database. But yeah, w in this scenario, we will go with the MySQL database, and that's why I will execute this command. Ah, I did already uh, write that, and let's. Uh, all right, the backend of Zabbix server is installed. At first, we need to create the database. Uh, I will at first enter the MySQL client and create a database uh, by using this command. And it's very important to pick the character set to UTF-8 and also collate UTF-8 underscore bin grant all pr privileges by using this command and I will change the password to the Zabbix right here and uh, quit the thing and that's it. Uh, yes, uh, next thing, uh, by using these commands we did create the database and did uh, create a username and with the password which are able to access this database. The next step we must include the schema inside the database, all the configuration. And in, in this part, we must, uh, uh, we must have this uh, create.sql.gz, which is available only when you set up this package. That's, that's the reason why the file is persistent on the file system. And I will maybe uh, uh, split into the two steps this command let's navigate to the to this directory and search yeah there is a file like this and uh, by using zcat sorry uh, zcat uh, create sql gz and pass to the uh, my sql client and uh, to the user zabbix Let's prompt for the password and insert directly inside the database Zabbix. Enter. We must enter the password for user Zabbix. It's uh, password Zabbix. The same we did uh, configure in the in this step. And this command takes a minute to complete. Now the minute is gone. What next? The database is there. We must configure the. We must configure this guy. How, how, in the, in the world he can communicate with the database, and this must be specified inside the this configuration file. We I am open the file here, and we can search directly. D, B P all capital letters enter and it it brought bro it brings us uh, to the password field i will totally suggest always do not modify this uh, line which happens to uh, be after the line default it will uh, bring you a, a nice overview later when you would like to see what is the default value for this uh, particular section? What's the default value? So I totally suggest to press uh, two times a letter Y and then uh, by uh, pressing one time a P, you will print the same line and now you can uh, modify this line and enter the password Zabbix here. And that's it. Let's write and quit the file. Uh, now the backend knows how to communicate with the database. Uh, here is the frontend uh, dependencies. We must uh, configure the time zone inside this file. Okay, and here just uh, uncomment this line or and and make sure you got the right time zone inside this field. Right, quit. What to do now? Uh, let's start the Zabbix server at first. The Zabbix server will instantly write a vlog file under the var log Zabbix. Like right now, this directory is empty, and I will start the backend. Start Zabbix server, 
and that's it. And let's check again. There is a log file. And what does it say right now? It says something is not uh, something is not working. Cannot start alert manager. Cannot bin socket to blah blah blah. Permission denied, and that is because SE Linux. I did say at the f uh, startup, uh, this is a fresh operating system. We can s uh, see the SE Linux status by using command get and force, and we can see that uh, it's uh, now doing his job and uh, blocking every every uh, suspicious thing what happens inside the operating system and I will disable this globally under the etc uh, se Linux and config there is additional line and I will set here a thing uh, permissive it it still it still it, it, it will still monitor the what what is happening but do not block anything and to instantly uh, set this mode to change the, the state from enforcing to other state we can use command set enforce zero and it will instantly uh, switch to the permissive mode which we did enter inside the config file and i know that uh, the zabbix service are al uh, always trying to are, are still trying to uh, boot up the service yeah, so let's check it. Let's check log again. Cat Zabbix server log, and it did succeed. Now we can go back and analyze what did happen previously. We did have this error, permission denied, and it said Zabbix server stopped. And in the after a few seconds, after ten seconds, it tried start again and now it did succeed and we can see what components are integrate uh, are are uh, available for the functionality and what sub processes are are started right now uh, okay uh, what next let's let's continue to follow the instructions uh, we did install the front end and we did configure the front end and we can uh, also start other components like the Zabbix agent this guy systemctl start Zabbix agent it will instantly also write agent log file over here let's see what is inside agent is also started and uh, turned on the collector processes and listener processes uh, and the last thing starting the front end system ctl start httpd start and now the web server will be started and by con contacting the ip address like this we are able to sign in inside or front end under the zabbix uh, forward slash uh, ip address forward slash zabbix and we can here create uh, sorry press next next uh, write the password it's a mandatory thing next uh, name for zabbix i will leave it uh, blank and that's it and at the end it will create such configuration file if you somehow decide to automate everything uh, this process uh, about installation like some kickstart script then you can uh, as well to create this file by hand it, con uh, it contains everything which we did enter inside the front end this password what is the name for Zabbix server and which port is uh, used to uh, to uh, see if the backend is even alive and the final step we must uh, enable all the components at the startup we did set up the 
database, the backend, the frontend and agent. So there is a four components and for that particular example we must uh, make sure this command is executed and also we'll include MariaDB. Okay, that's it for this video.